on? <laughs> it is on. Happy Sabbath, everyone. All right, we can do better than that. We're in God's presence this morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Man, it is indeed a wonderful privilege to be in God's house today. I missed you. I missed you. I'm sure you missed me too, right? You missed us too, right? Um, so excited to be here, and definitely there's a word from the Lord today for his people. But before we go into it, I just want to do a little, I guess maybe housekeeping. Um, we've been out, I think, since January um, as we prepared for our little baby girl. And I'm happy to announce that our little baby, baby girl is here, and God is really good to us. I think she's on the screen. <laughs> Her name is Anaya Nicole Lodge. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen somebody. We are, we are definitely navigating this thing called parenthood, and I must say, it's indeed a journey. Where's Mark? Oh, Mark, I got a picture for you, Mark. I got a picture for you. <laughs> but uh, I just want to take this. <laughs> I got a picture for you, Mark. You want to see it? All right, I have it for you. All right, so definitely we just want to take this time out to just say thank you. Thank you, church. Uh, we have received a lot of um, congratulations. We have received a lot of encouragement. Uh, we've even had persons stopping by, dropping off food for us, and also like delivering food during the course of the journey. And I just want to, from the bottom of our hearts, Kelly and I, just say thank you. You've been awesome. Amen? Amen. Now, this week has definitely been an interesting week for quite a number of people, right? For this week, some celebrated birthdays. Is that correct? <laughs> Looks so frightened. So this week we had some folks that celebrated birthdays. Amen? Amen. Amen. So just want to take this time to say happy birthday and just want to wish God's richest blessings upon you. Um, this week we had our international, uh, I guess, International Women's Day. It's a day that is celebrated across you know, the world that really identifies and just getting some feedback here. R really just appreciate the work, the dedication that women contribute to the society. So I just want to invite all the ladies of this church to stand. Come on, come on, all the ladies of this church. Come, come on. And the men are just going to give a round of applause. <laughs> thank you for your hard work, thank you for your contributions, thank you for your dedication um, at home, at work, in your community, and wherever you serve. If I should ask the children this week, how was <laughs> the week, they might tell me that the week it was filled with, or it was a Shark Tank experience week. Come on, yeah, come on. So yeah, so this week for our children at LNJ8 was a Shark Tank experience. They were able to share some of their science projects, and it was pretty good. I believe I saw at least two other projects online, and I was really amazed, like, the kids are trying to come up with innovative solutions just to be able to take care of the ocean, take care of the planet that we live. So I know they had a great week. Now, for others, this week was pretty interesting. Like, for example, my neighbor. It so happened that, I guess maybe 10, 10 o'clock in the night, we heard a shout, help, 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 only to find out that his car caught a fire inside his garage. And he had to actually use his beer hands to push his car outside. Um, so that nothing took place. So I'm trying to say that some of us, we had a good week. Some of us, we had a relaxed week. Uh, some of us, we had a challenging week. 
and I, I'm here with you. Others, all right, others work, stress them to the bones. But it's so awesome to be in God's house on this is holy day. Amen, somebody. Inside God's house, we get the energy we need to continue to press on somebody. <laughs> Amen. Um, for some, they had a relaxation of a week. Right, Sharon? Well, welcome back, Doug. Welcome. <laughs> All right. So, with that being said, navigating this whole parenting thing has really been interesting. So, I have two things I have done that way off. Number one, when the baby was born, I was trying to navigate how to keep her calm and everything, right? But it just wasn't working out while we were at the hospital. So I decided that I am going to find a way to maybe find a chair to sit down that I can rock her on. No chair was in the room at the time. So I said, all right, I might be able to find a chair outside the room. So I went to pull the door, and I saw a chair. I walked to the chair, and church, you would believe what happened. I literally shut down Sadabak Hospital with a code pink. Who knows what a code pink is? Code pink, so when you, when you have a code pink, it's like um, there's somebody that's trying to snatch a baby. So they try to, you know, <laughs> they block all exit, they like security, everything like shut down. So, so that happened while, you know, just trying to comfort her and everything, right? Uh, another thing, I, was, I had an dentist appointment, and it so happened that I got a text saying the dentist appointment is X date, and I showed up at the dentist like maybe a week or so earlier. <laughs> when I came to the dentist, the dentist was like, what are you doing here? I was like, you sent me a text, I have, a, I have an appointment this morning. She said, no, but you came just in time, because you know what, I have nobody at this time. So I was able to get the teeth clean, and then it was, you know, God's work. The dentist was trying to find a house and so forth, and I was able to connect her to a great person that's going to help her out to find a house. So you see how God work? Mysterious ways. Now enough of that. There's a word from the Lord today. Amen? And if you're excited to be in God's house today, say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you're blessed and you know that you're in the right spot today, let's say amen. amen. And if you're anticipating the blessing that God has in store for you, let's say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our passage for meditation today is coming from the book of Isaiah. I was trying to really wrap my mind around the current event that is taking place around the world, and I was led to the book of Isaiah. And we're going to be meditating for a while, verse 1 through 8. And it's going to be, all of us, we're going to be preaching this morning. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> all right. So let's start. So how I'm going to do it this morning, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to go through the text, and we're going to take out, we're going to extract some gems from the text. Then I'm going to share five points from the text, and then I'm going to preach it as the Spirit leads. Amen? All right. So let, let's start. God, it's your time now. Stand up in this place and use us for your glory. Through Jesus' name, amen. It was in the year that King Uzziah died. I also saw the Lord sitting up on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. So what's going to happen now? This is in the year that King Uzziah died. King Uzziah died right? So we're going to say it after two. One, two, in the year that King Uzziah died. <laughs> after two, one, two. All right. This is going to change momentarily. This is going to change. All right, let's go again. More energy, more life. Let's go. One, two. I 
also saw the Lord. All right, let's try this side. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. All right, over this side, it's high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Maybe I need to come closer. So this side. In the year that King Uzziah died, ready? I also saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. We're still not there as yet. Uh, let's get some more energy, some more power to it. This is God's word. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. That's the spirit, and his train filled the and it's trained further. That's it. It was 17, actually, no. It was 742 BC. We were talking about King Uzziah who died. Let me find the text. And what's so fitting about this text is that King Uzziah died. But Isaiah was able to see something else in vision. And he saw a different perspective when he went into the sanctuary. So we see here that Isaiah saw the Lord in the temple. And verse 2 says that above it stood the seraphims. These are angels. Their anatomy is different. They don't just have two wings, they have six wings. With two, they covered their face. Uh, with two, they covered their feet. And with two, they did fly. And watch verse 3. It says, The angels, they cried one to another, literally in antiphonal chords, Holy, holy, holy. So what that means, it's like a call and response. So if I say holy, you say are you getting it? If I say holy, you say? But they said that because they saw the majesty of God and the whole earth is full of his glory. The holy, 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 in Hebrew it is kadosh. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, pastor. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. He is separated. He is apart. He is incomparable to you can't compare him he is the holy one and verse 5 says as a result well verse 4 says as a result of their crying out to God holy it was so loud so majestic that it it shook the post of the temple Isaiah in verse 5 he realized his current situation and he had to cry out woe is me because in God's presence, I'm really undone. And my current situation shows me that I'm a man of unclean lips. And look at what happened after Isaiah's confession. The seraphim took a coal from the altar and purged him, purged his sins, purged his iniquity. And after that, God speaks. He said, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then Isaiah said, here am I, send me. So the first point, point number one, he is alive and well. What's point number one? All right, come on church, he's alive and well. <laughs> Number two, he is sitting upon his throne. 
Uh, number three, God is able to throw his weight of his glory around your situation. That might be too long, but I, I see it, I see it. God is able to throw the weight of his glory around your situation. And point number four, God still speaks. All right, so I got it now. So let's do this. Holy Ghost, take over. Now it was in the year 742 BC that the king that was on the throne, he died. The name of the king was Uzziah. Church of the living God, Uzziah was not a bad king. Uzziah was actually one of the better kings that sat on the throne while he reigned in Judah and also the land of Benjamin. Understand the narrative that Uzziah, because of his connection with God, brought spiritually to the, to the nation, and he also brought wealth and prosperity to the nation. Uzziah actually built temples, and he also built agriculture. Because of Uzziah's connection with God, the nation was protected from the enemies. Let's understand the narrative here that Uzziah was a friendly king. A friendly king in those days was actually null and void. So Uzziah and Isaiah actually formed a bond. It was a bond so close that Isaiah and Uzziah would go up and they would pray for the sins of the people. It was a year of grief. It was a year of vulnerability because the king that was on the throne, the king that ruled at the age of 16 to, and reigned for 52 years, the king was dead. Can you imagine a king reigning for 52 years? That, that's definitely a long time to reign. The nation was gripped with grief, grief, gripped with anger, wondering who is it that's going to take over this throne? It was a case where they were wondering, will we get a godly king? Will we get a king that is a tyrant? Will we get a king that respects us as a people? Will this king be a builder? Will this king help us and protect us from the surrounding nation? Oh, it was a year indeed that the folks of God were left vulnerable. They were wondering, Babylonian army can attack them from the east. Oh, the Assyrian army can attack them from the north. The king is dead and no one is on the throne. That was Isaiah's current reality outside of the temple. But watch as Isaiah went inside the temple of God and got the vision. The temple, his vision was changed and his perspective shift as he saw something different. It was inside the temple that Isaiah realized that the king of kings and the Lord of lords was on the throne. It was in the temple that Isaiah realized that God still sits on the throne and he is lifted up high above all other thrones that is around the world. And I think that's an amen for somebody today. Because our God, your God, my God is still seated upon the throne. He's still alive and well, still alive in your situation, still alive in all the troubles, the trials that we face on a regular basis. Your God, my God, our God is still alive. Amen. All right. Not only that, we see here that he was seated on the throne. Now, understand the fact that in sitting upon the throne, it's a position of authority. Understand the fact that when he saw God, God wasn't pacing the floor like I'm doing now. God wasn't twisting his arms wondering what is happening, what is going on right now. God wasn't scratching his head thinking, what shall I do? The king was seated on the throne in a position of authority. And I want you to know amidst everything that you are going through, amidst the stresses of life, amidst the frustration, amidst the moment, amidst all the perplexities that is happening, God is still on the throne. Um, is the fact that 
We have gas prices that are flying through the roof. God is still amidst the fact that mental health is taking over. God is still amidst the fact that sometimes the body is sick and we're in pain and we just don't know what to do. God is what? God is still on the throne. My friends, we have the hope in God that he is still taking care of the universe. He has not left the universe to just fend for itself, but he is still in He is still in control. The next part of the verse says he's seated high above high above all other thrones. Our God is sovereign. And the position of that is it's his authority. After Isaiah saw him seated upon the throne, he saw that his, let, let, let me find that, seated upon the throne, Isaiah chapter 6. High and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, suggesting that he's above all other God's all other kingdom, he is supreme ruler of everything. And his train, his train. Have you ever seen one of those long kingly train that it's it, it's so wide that you know you have people have to be lifting it, lifting it. That's his train, his robe, it filled the entire temple. Now with six wings we looked and we said the angels that were in his presence. They had to cover their faces because of the glory of God that they experienced. They had to cover their faces and they had to cover their feet. And even we can see with Moses when God called him at the burning bush, he was like, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes from off your feet. Because where you're standing is holy ground. The presence of God, I tell you, church, it is holy ground. Like sometimes when we are outside and we see all that is happening outside, sometimes it causes us to worry. Sometimes it causes us to fear and fret. But when we come inside the presence of God, when we come inside his temple, it is holy ground. And we experience things differently. Uh, what's the angels? What's the angels in excitement? What's the angels as they shout the praises to God? It's like they can't keep it to themselves. One cried one to another in antiphonal chord saying, No, no, that wasn't the holy that they said. One cried in antiphonal form saying, Man, that wasn't it. One cried in antiphonal form saying, Holy. Come on, let's some power. Holy. Say so it's holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Let's try it. They cried. Oh, they cried. They cried. Is the Lord God Almighty. Let's try it one more time. They cried. They cried. They cried. Is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. It suggests Kadash, Kadash, um, holy, distinct, set apart, incomparable to the whole world is full of your presence, your glory. It's really suggesting that when we come into God's church, we see a different perspective than when we we're outside. When Isaiah was outside the temple, you know, he saw all the perplexities of the moment. He saw the frustration, the grief, the challenges, the vulnerability of the nation. But when he came into the temple, he saw a vision of glory bright. And it really changed his perspective forever. He stood in awe as angels and seraphim cried, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, the all earth is full of your glory. Oh, the angels cry holy, holy because of every manifestation of God's goodness towards the children of men deserves a holy. Oh, when God saved you from that crazy person that almost ran you off the road this morning, they cried. 
Oh, when God was able to take care of your medical bill that was at the hospital, they cried. Oh, man. Come on. We're, we're crying. We're crying. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, Barbara. We cry. Holy. The whole earth is full of his glory. And watch it, watch it as they continue. The seraphims just cried holy. And I can just imagine being in that, that awesome presence. You know, I can imagine just even being there. And even this song came to mind. I, I don't know if somebody can jump on the piano. And this song came to mind for me. Oh, the splendor of the king a clothing majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And always sing, how great, how great is our God. I can imagine in the present singing age to age he stands and time is in his hands beginning and the end beginning and the end. It was a worship experience in the temple. The God had three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Sing how great, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And always sing how great, how great is our God. You are name above all you are worthy of for praise and are will sing how great is our God. Can you imagine the worship? Then sing my soul, my Savior God. To thee, how great thou art, mm. great thou art. We're singing how great thou art in the temple. How great thou art. Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Watch the worship experience. How great thou art, how great thou art, you are name above all names, you are worthy of for praise. And our hearts will sing, how great is our God. I can imagine as he was in the presence and just seeing everything that was happening. He was singing song like, draw me close to you. 
never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire, and no one else will do. And nothing else can take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace. Oh, help me find a way, or bring me back to you. Oh, oh Lord, you're all I want. We're singing, you're all I need, you're all I ever needed, you're all I want, help me know you are near. What's the worship experience? And it was inside the temple as they cried, holy, holy. As they worshiped God in, in singing, that Isaiah realized his nothingness. He realized that he is unworthy. And it was inside the temple that he got a glimpse of glory bright. He said, woe is me, because I am undone. And I am a man of unclean lips. But thank God that his angels were working same time. Thank God that the seraphims were able to, one, grab the coal from off the altar and went and he touched his lips, touched his tongue, and purged them from all sin, purged them from all iniquity. And then God speaks. God said, who shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah without hesitation, Isaiah without any reservation, he said, here am I. Here am I. Send me. So as we come to a close, just really want to leave you with the following. In 2022, there's a lot of things that are happening. Right now, across the world, we are seeing the global crisis. So when we're outside, we, we're seeing the gas prices. I saw something on Facebook last night that was so funny. Somebody said, the gas price right now could buy like a scientific calculator. It, it, it is ridiculous. When we're outside, we can see countries fighting against each other. Uh, when we're outside of the temple, we are able to experience the, the grief, the frustration of the moment, the, the, the mental health, the depression, and everything that so easily besets us. But the good news is that it's different when we come inside the temple. Because inside the temple, we have a different experience. Inside the temple, we are able to have an encounter with God. And I really believe with all my heart that when we experience that encounter, like Isaiah, will never be the same again. When we really stop and see that the magnificent God, the sustainer of the universe, the sovereign God is still seated high upon the throne. He is not dead like King Uzziah, 
but he still holds the weight of the world in his hand. It gives us a different perspective. When we come inside the church, we see that praise is activated. We, we see angels that are designed in such a way just to say, holy. 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 To be honest, the angels could just say, holy. God Almighty. The earth is full of your glory. But watch it. For emphasis, they said, my God, Yahweh, you are not just holy, not just holy, holy, but you are holy, holy, holy. You are the God who spoke and it was done. You are the one who commanded and it stood fast. You're still seated high on your throne and you deserve our praise. Psalm 22 declares that God inhabits the praise of his people. And sometimes I, I believe that we fall really short with really just praising God for who God is. We've been, <laughs> God has wowed us recently. And if he, and if he has, it's like, it's like second nature to us. Like we, we get so caught up with the, the blessings of God and not even to even cry holy. But when we come inside God's presence, <laughs> we should be shouted holy from the top of our voices. The, the holiness was so profound. It was so loud <laughs> that it shook the doorposts of the temple. That, that, that's how powerful it was. It was a case there saying, Lord, you're not just holy. God, you're not You are holy. And when this side shout out holy, it just caused a response from the next side to say holy. It's literally call and response like, I'm hearing you saying holy because you have experienced him in your life. So I'm going to shout out holy too because I'm going to lift him up because he, the sovereign God, is holy. When was the last time God has ever wowed you? When was the last time he has ever mesmerized you? How did it make you feel? It is something to think about. And also inside the presence of God, we realize our, our nothingness. We are the dust which the wind driveth away. But God is still interested in us as his people. Come on, somebody, say amen. amen. <laughs> Church. No. Church. He, he said the hair on our head is numbered. And I saw a gray here, right here. <laughs> He's so interested in our being that he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, listen to me, your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not even my thoughts. But I got you back. I got you. I'm still seated up on the throne. I'm high and lifted up. And watch it as the angels say holy, they hoist God with their praise. And when they hoist God with the praise, the weight of his glory fill the temple. Don't you want God's glory to fill you this morning? Don't you want God's glory to fill your house this morning? Isaiah, as I said, recognizes nothingness. But something that was really interesting with this verse, that throughout everything with the temple experience, Isaiah saw everything that was happening. 
and God did not speak from verses 1, I believe, to verse 7. God allowed him to see and experience a different thing inside the temple, to see his glory, his grandeur inside the temple. And then it was at verse 8 that he said, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? I watch Isaiah. Here am I. Send me. So who am I going to send to pack, to pack sunshine boxes for kids with chronic health care challenges? Who am I going to send to rescue the perishing that are in sin? Oh, who am I going to send to feed the homeless, to give them a warm meal, to give them clothes on their back, to let them know that there is hope in King Jesus? Oh, who am I going to send to teach and preach to all nations? Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Who am I going to send among us? Who I can use for my glory? Without reservation, Isaiah said, Here am I, send. Here am I, send. May that be our prayer. May that be our plea. Here am I. Send and me.